Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's a bit louder than I anticipated. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for coming here. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of Teradata to say, you know, we're really proud to be sponsoring Strata. We think Strata is a crucial part of the data science community here in the UK and in Europe. I'm going to talk a little bit about analysis, because that's what I do. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to run quickly through some of the things that I think are driving analysis and make it an imperative for all of our businesses. I'm then going to t give you an example of an organization who showed that everyone can do this. It's not complex. It's not difficult. You, too, can be part of this. Now, when I was given a brief about this, I was told of two things to do. Firstly, no product pushing. So I promise you I will mention Teradata maybe twice in the entire presentation. And the other thing was to start on a cheerful note. So on a cheerful note, here's the tomb of Thomas Bayes. If anyone is visiting London for the first time, you can go and see uh, Thomas Bayes' tomb. It's uh, over near Silicon Roundabout, quite appropriately. Analysis is the key to value. It is absolutely the way we transform data, the raw bits, the raw bytes, into something that can transform businesses. And the strange thing is that this kind of analysis, the thoughts behind this, aren't new. Uh, Thomas Bay, 1701 to 1761, his uh, most famous paper was published in 1763, which isn't great timing from his perspective. Um, the reason they didn't do much with Bayes' theorem in the 1760s, simply because in those days a computer was a person sitting in a room adding up rows of tables. The ability to process data or even to source data was limited. We're not in that position now. We have amazing power to compute and to understand things from our data. So what are the analytical imperatives? Well, the first one is to stop worrying about size. Size is not everything. Okay. Great, if you've got lots of data, that's brilliant. But actually, the ability to do clever things with small amounts of data is equally important. And the complexity of the things you might want to do is also important as well. So don't think that it's all about size. Great if you've got size, but if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be the first people to use uh, XKCD in the conference, and also the first person to say, correlation does not equal causation. I hope I'm not the last person to say that in this conference. Why is this important? There are people who say, when you have big data, when you have these huge volumes of data, actually, correlation becomes much more interesting than causation. They could not be more wrong. The danger is when you have big data, you will see more correlations. There will be thousands of interesting things there, but only some of them are actually causally related. By all means, if you want to go out and uh, you know, invest all of your pension funds into stocks based on the length of skirts, for example, feel free to do that. Okay? Just don't do it with my pension fund. The other important thing is that we need more people doing the analysis. Okay? We need more unicorns. Uh, Teradata actually did a survey uh, fairly recently. We asked 300 C-level executives across the UK, France, and Germany about uh, their thoughts on big data and recruitment. And for, those, for the 54% of the companies who said, we have an active big data strategy, of those, 84% said, we're having problems recruiting people. Okay, 84% of them are having problems recruiting people. Now, put your hands up if you're a data scientist. Go on, don't be frightened. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Good news. <laughs> Good news, people. Our jobs are secure. And if they're not, we don't care because we can go to another job, which probably pays more and has a condo in California. So great news for those of us in the role. But actually, for companies where you don't have those people, that's a real problem. We need to bring more people through. We need to find better ways of training people up and finding those talents and nurturing them. It's really, really important because if we can't satisfy that demand, we're going to be in real trouble. And we need to do things differently. I started my, actually, I started my career uh, in publishing, but I became a data miner. Okay, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit like being an alcoholic saying, you know, my name's Duncan Ross and I'm a data miner. Uh, it's been two days since I touched a data set. You know, if we, if we think about the way that data mining and data science used to work, we used to have these wonderful six-month projects. I would go to the CFO and say, I'm going to do a, a data mining project. I'm going to reduce churn by 0.5%, and that's going to be worth $21 million to the bottom line. It was easy to say, 
that's how much it's going to make. It was easy to have the big timeline there. That just doesn't work in data science. We need to be much more rapid. We need to be much more innovative. We need to move beyond horizon one, these incremental improvements, right into horizon three, the transformational opportunities. Because believe me, big data has the power to transform businesses. How are we going to do that? Well, we need to bring data together. I can't afford to spend time bringing a data set from over here and linking it to a data set over there. That's time that's wasted. I'm not investigating things whilst I'm doing that. I need to work faster, I need to fail faster and learn from my failures, okay? I'll be the first to, well, actually, other people will be the first to admit, but I'm one of the first to admit that I make failures. You know, I, I do analyses that just don't work. They seem like a great idea at the time, but when I look at it, eh, it wasn't quite what I anticipated. But we've got to understand that actually those are learning opportunities. When we fail, we learn things about our data and about ourselves, and we need to institutionalize that, record it, remember it, and reuse it. We need to explain far better. You know, it's, I, you know I, I pride myself that if you look at the bell curve of sociability in the data mining and data science community, I'm probably towards the top end of that, but even I'm not the most sociable person, as you'll find out if you see me drinking later. Um, we need to be better at explaining what we're doing and explaining what it means, because if there's a shortage of data scientists actually doing the work, there's an even greater shortage of analytical people at the sea level. The people up there still rely on gut feel and intuition. We've got to tell them there's a better way, and the better way is data. And we've got to be far, far more creative about the way we do things. And one of the things we're starting to see is the use of techniques such as hackathons or datathons as ways of exploring things much more quickly and finding out new things about the data. So those were my analytic imperatives. I'm now going to tell you about an example that shows that you too could do this. And I'm going to introduce you to someone called Hannah Underwood. Okay. I'm very lucky because uh, Teradata, as well as sponsoring this event, also sponsored Datakind UK in our first uh, hack hackathon this summer. And Datakind UK, I've got to be careful here, I have two hats, I'm a director of Datakind UK, so bit of a clash of interest here, but Datakind UK is a charity that brings together data scientists and charities. Why do we do that? Well, we know that charities want to do stuff with data, but frankly, it's really difficult for them to find the people to do that work for them. You know, data scientists are expensive. The data structures they need are expensive. They don't have the expertise, so that's what Datakind's there for. And we did this data dive this summer, and I was thinking about what I would talk about. I had many options. I could have talked about what Oxfam were doing. They were trying to predict world food prices, which is kind of an ambitious target if you think about it for a weekend. Um, <laughs> they learned a lot of things about it, by the way. It's not related to oil prices, or at least not directly. Also, goats are surprisingly expensive for short periods of time. I could have talked about Community Voluntary Action Tameside, who wanted to understand the relationships and the health of their voluntary sector community in the borough of Tameside near Manchester. Okay, they have a thousand voluntary volunteer organizations there. Are they thriving? Are they doing well? Are they suffering? They wanted to know that. Help Age International, they published the first ever international index on how different countries treat elderly people. Okay, and you can go and follow the link at the bottom and that will show you that, you can play with that. Or Hampshire County Council, who wanted to predict where children were going to have special educational needs so that they could target where they put their resources to help them. But instead, I'm gonna talk about someone from our North Data Dive, Hannah. Because Hannah is an example of how you can take and her organization, an example of how you can take some of these ideas about analysis and you can actually build them into your organization and transform your organization. Hannah works for Key Fund. Key Fund work for NEETS. NEETS is this wonderful phrase you hear in the third sector, not in education, employment, or training. Okay, young people. They are an organization of eight people. They're not a big company. They don't have a lot of resources. But what they did is they came along to a data dive and they wanted to discover things about the process they were running. And the way they run their process, by the way, is that they work with these young people and rather than saying to the young people, you should do this, they get young people to propose projects to them. The young people may say, we want to do this together or we want to do that. They evaluate them uh, around 12 key skill areas. And then if they think they're a good match to the skill areas, they will fund them and let the young people actually learn and uh, develop their skills through that process. So they examined the data. 
And one of the things they discovered is that in their cyclical process, they had one step that didn't seem to be moving people on. It didn't actually result in value for their organization. And on the back of the data and the analysis they'd done, they had the courage to actually say, let's stop doing that. Let's change our process to actually drive better value for our funders and better results for the people we're working with. Not only that, but for on the back of that work, they actually went out and started looking for, and they finally recruited a data scientist to take that work further. And if a charity with eight people in the northeast of England can do that, all of your organizations can do that. And it doesn't end there. They're actually in the build-up to uh, what they're calling the Ambition Lab Hackathon. This will be on the 29th and 30th of November. It's in six locations, most of which begin with S for no readily explained reason. And if you're at all interested in getting involved with them, by all means, check out the DataKind UK website, but also think about how you could apply your skills to this. Because it's not only a really worthwhile experience for you as individuals, it will help move society forward and help drive value for young people not just in the Northeast, but throughout the country. That's it. Thank you very much for listening. Remember, you can do this as well. If you want to come and see us, because I wasn't allowed to product pitch and wouldn't anyway, I wouldn't insult your intelligence, you can come and see some uh, other presentations we're doing or visiting, visit us downstairs. Also watch the UK Data Dive video. But remember, above all, analysis, it can change your business. It's not all about the size of your data. Business must lead in technology not technology lead business. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much for your time.